Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to the fifth and final lecture of chapter nine, where I'm going to discuss the exercises at the end of the chapter. Okay, these exercises involve looking at three different equations that are of the form of Newton's equation in one dimension under the action of a conservative force. So the first one is a linear equation, and the second and third are nonlinear equations. And I ask you to do essentially the same thing for each problem. Write it as a first order system on the phase plane, the S V equals S dot plane. Compute the potential energy and sketch it. In the examples I gave, I just sketched a potential energy, but for these concrete um, equations, you can compute V of S, the potential energy function, and determine its critical points. And that's what you need for part C. Find all the equilibria for the equations and classify their stability. And you can do that in terms of the critical points of the potential energy function. Sketch the phase portrait. Okay, I want you to sketch the qualitatively distinct level curves of the energy function that you get. Qualitatively distinct is something you learn as you go along. For the first one, for example, for first equ example equation, all the trajectories, this is a big hint, are closed curves, periodic orbits, because you don't have any separatrices. That's not the case for problem two and three. So qualitatively distinct would be the different families that are separated by the separatrices. Now in part one, I also ask you, or problem one, I ask you to compute part E, S as a function of time and V as a function of time. And you you have in, you can transform Newton's equations into integral form and you get integrals that you can evaluate. In the first problem, those are just trigonometric functions, which you're all familiar with. I don't ask you to do that in problem two and three because they're more complicated elliptic functions. And that's a bit beyond the scope of this course. But if you're feeling particularly adventurous, you could get a good table of integrals and try your hand at that for problems two and three. It's a type of, it comes up in more advanced work and it's a good skill to have, but uh, um, th for this course, since we have limited time and everything, there are more important things to do. Okay, that's it for now. And next time we start chapter 10, the pendulum and torque and angular momentum. See you next time.